Folks, we're talking about scales. It is do re mi time once again on the brownstone. Let's do this. Friends and neighbors, welcome back to the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you very much for being here once again. And if you are new to the channel, welcome. Today we're talking about scales. There was a question in the comment section of one of the videos recently that asked about how to learn scales. And I thought, I have yet to do a dedicated video lesson on just the basics of learning scales. So this is it. And uh, to whoever it was that answered that question, thank you. Good question. I hope you're watching this right now. So in almost every video, I've talked about a specific uh, scale pattern that I like to use, that I tend to favor. There are many scale patterns that you can use when it comes to playing the major or the minor scale. But there are two sort of patterns that I use as, as templates for other scales. So when I get into playing the modes or when I get into playing like altered scales or things like that, what I tend to do is use one of these templates and I will show you the templates now. If you're familiar with the videos on this channel, you've probably seen this uh, pattern many times, but I'm gonna go over it again slowly uh, and make sure that everyone's on the same page. All right, check it out. So I'm placing my fingers on the fretboard with my first finger at the second fret of the A string. And then I wanna keep that four fret span happening with one finger per fret. So simply put, my, my first finger is on the second fret, second finger is the third fret, third finger is the fourth fret, little finger is the fifth fret. And that's my four fret span. If you can't reach that, then keep a nice little compact thing happening where your fingers kind of know where to go, but you don't necessarily have to keep your, your fingers on you know, each fret. So the pattern is as follows, and you've probably seen this before. So if I have assigned one finger per fret, then I'm gonna use my second finger, volume, I always do that. <laughs> I'm gonna use my second finger on the third fret of the A string, that's C, and then I'm gonna to go to my fourth finger. So that's two and four on the A string, second finger to fourth finger. And then I wanna go down to the next string and I'm gonna play first finger, second finger, fourth finger. So that's two, four, one, two, four. And then on the G string, I'm going to play second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret. And if I'm thinking of the fingers, that's gonna be one, three, four. So the major scale pattern is two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. Those are the fingers that I'm using um, on each of these strings. So that's my pattern. That's my template for the major scale. I call it a template for two reasons. One, no matter where I play that pattern, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, that is always gonna be, that's always gonna be a major scale. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. The other reason why that's my template is because once I start to get into different major scales, different sort of modes of the major scale, then what happens is uh, you realize that there are just slight alterations to the template in order to get you to that particular scale. In other words, let's say I wanted to play a Lydian scale. Well, you can think of the Lydian scale in a, in a specific way when you use this template. If I wanna play C Lydian, I just have to remember that a Lydian scale is the fourth note of the scale, my major template, sharp, right? So I, make, so I make that alteration to the template and then follow through. And that's a C Lydian scale. That's just for demonstration. You don't really have to know that right now. But those are the two reasons why, the two main reasons why I use this 2412413 pattern as my template. So now that we've done the major scale, we should also find the template for the minor scale. Now, what I like to do is use the relative minor. So here's what I mean by that. If I play 
um, a major scale. Here I'm sticking with C major. And then play the major scale starting from the sixth note of the scale and going from the octave of that sixth note or to the octave of that sixth note. What I end up getting is a natural minor scale. I'll show you what I mean by that. So C major has no sharps and no flats, right? All of the notes are natural. So if I go to A and play all of the natural notes, the result is a natural minor scale. I'll show you what I mean by that. So when I play through and start with A and then B, C is the minor third, just happens to be the minor third, so it falls into place perfectly. Uh, there's D, the fourth, E, the fifth, the sixth is a minor sixth. The seventh, G, is a minor seventh. And then I get to the octave. So what I've done here is I've created a pattern that uses all of the natural notes. In a minor scale formation. That gives me the relative minor of C major because the relative minor scale will always have the same amount of sharps or flats as its relative major. In this case, there are no sharps or flats. We have a natural C major scale, which is directly connected to an A minor scale. No sharps, no flats, C major starting and ending on the sixth. I hope that makes sense. So now that we know the relationship between C major and A minor, let's find and figure out that template for the A minor scale. And that template is going to be your template for any minor scale wherever you play it. And it's actually quite simple. If I keep that four fret span happening, starting with my first finger on the fifth fret of the E string, then here's my pattern. It goes one, three, four. In other words, within my four fret span, I've got first finger, third finger, fourth finger. Then I move down to the next string and I do the same thing. First finger, third finger, fourth finger. And then when I go down to the D string, it's first finger and third finger. And that's the A minor scale. and it is direct, directly related to C major. I'll show you what I mean by that. If I play A minor, what I did there was I played the A minor scale all the way up to the minor third, the octave of the minor third which happens to be the note C. So that was the A minor scale. Now check this out. I'm going to play the A minor scale, but I'm going to play the root, the second, B, and then I'm going to go to C and then play the C major scale. So check out the sound of the A minor scale. Now watch what happens when I play the first note of A minor, the second note of A minor, and then when I get to C, I play the C major scale. I don't know if you noticed, but those two patterns were identical in sound, just using different positions. A minor. A minor up to up to C major and back down to the A minor. I hope that makes sense. So in case you haven't noticed, there is a direct relation between the C major and the A minor. This means that since the two are pretty much the, ex the exact same scale, I can think of both of those scales together as one large shape. So if I do that, then I want to be able to follow through and understand what also what's also happening on the G string. So, if I play um, 
if I play the A minor scale again and then try to play or learn the template across all four strings, here's what I get. We already know the beginning of the template. One, three, four, one, three, four. And then we want to get three more notes on each string. So on the D string, we already know we're playing one, three. But here, instead of playing four, I'm going to skip that fourth fret of my four fret span and extend it to five. So we'll just say that's five. One, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, five, one, three, five. So the first two strings are the same and the last two strings are the same. One, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, five, one, three, five. And that is the template for a minor scale if you extend it across all four strings. If we do the same thing for the major scale, we already know we have two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. Well, the same thing happens. If I play one, three, four on the D string, I go down to the G string and I play one, three, four again. So my major scale template across all four strings is as follows. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. And those are my two templates. And the beauty of that is they are directly connected. So when you start improvising and making up bass lines or creating different uh, lines or patterns or solos, you can now think of the A minor scale and the C major scale as the same scale. And if you're in different keys, maybe you're starting from somewhere else, let's say you're playing something in G minor, you just go to the third of that G minor scale and that's where you start your major. Which means, in this particular case, if I'm playing in G minor, I have G, A, my third is B flat. So the B flat major scale is going to be the relative major of that G minor scale. And now I have this whole like full, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven fret span that I can now use to create different lines and go back and forth between these two scales to, uh, to advance the harmony a little bit. Because the scales are related, they use the same notes, they share the same notes, which means they're the same scale. Obviously this idea is gonna work in reverse because if I'm playing in the key of C major, then what I can do is think of that C, that root note, as the third note of a minor scale. And then when I bring that down to the root, I get the relative minor, and now I have my seven fret span between the, the minor scale and the major scale. Same thing. If I'm playing in uh, the key of B flat major, I think of B flat as my third fret of a minor scale, and just go, that's my minor third, there's my second, there's my root note, which means G minor is my relative of uh, my relative minor of B flat major. I'm going to leave that there. That's a lot of information I threw at you and I want you to understand all of it. If you have any questions about anything or if there's something that you don't understand, you can always rewind the video and if that doesn't help, you can ask a question in the comments section and hopefully I can help you out. Um, and that's that. My friends and neighbors, thank you for visiting me once again here in the Brownstone. You know what to do, like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Peace.